All right, let's fucking rock. Today was the worst Twitter day I've ever seen. Everything trending on there just had absolute garbage discourse surrounding it. You've got the Canadian trucker protest convoy. You've got Joe Rogan and all the shit going on there that we'll talk about. You've got The Rock previously supporting him, and then some black author tweeted at The Rock like, bad rock, bad. And then The Rock was like, haha, just kidding. Controversy is bad for my brand. You're welcome. And outside of that, you've got Aquafina getting shit for supposedly appropriating black culture and using African-American vernacular English as if black people copyrighted a whole sub-language that plenty of them don't even speak. Everything I saw pissed me off. It was a horrible way to greet the day, I'll tell you that. So now we get to wade through all the shit and dissect it so I feel better about having witnessed it. We'll start with the least important issue, the truckers, LOL JK. I mean, that's going on in Canada, so it's not directly relevant to us Americans out here with our holsters and spurs, but it's probably the biggest thing to come out of there since Justin Bieber. So here's the parts of the situation I understand. The truckers are protesting vaccine mandates. Canada is one of the last countries to still be in basically full lockdown, despite their COVID cases still rising, with the lockdown having made no significant difference, because vaccinated people can still get and spread COVID, which we found out a little too late but which is still not informing current policy in a lot of areas for reasons that are purely political, and also because for a super long time people just straight up lied about shit, and are still lying about shit on mainstream media networks to this day. MSNBC literally just tweeted a couple days ago a quote from a doctor who was like, your kids better be vaccinated or Omicron is going to do serious damage to them. Like, nope, the vast, humongously vast majority of children are virtually unaffected by COVID beyond a runny nose and the like, unless they have some serious underlying medical issues, and that even applied to Delta, which was the dangerous variant. So Omicron, which is even milder than normal COVID before Delta, isn't going to do jack to them. The UK just basically opened back up again. You don't even need masks in places other than hospitals and pharmacies and public transportation. You can visit your relatives in the hospital again. Wowie zowie! And working from home is no longer a directive. If you get COVID, you still have to self-isolate, though, which is correct. It really just makes no sense for there to be a vaccine mandate anywhere if vaccinated people can still get and spread COVID, and they really don't want you to think about it too hard. But doesn't getting vaccinated reduce the risk of transmission? Yes, by a whopping 10%. According to a study I found and then three months after the vaccination the number goes back up to where it would be if you weren't vaccinated with a roughly 67% close contact transmission rate. So there's a vaccine mandate to force everyone's odds all the way down to 57% for three months and then what we get four boosters a year pass. Different variants will have slightly different stats but none of it justifies some of the actions we've been taking. Anyway, point being, Canada is very far behind due to what many people think is a pure incompetence of leadership from racism's most valiant enemy, Mr. Blackface Trudeau himself, who has tried to attribute every nasty motive in the book to the trucker protest, from white supremacy to transphobia, just to throw as many smoke screens as he can in a bleak attempt to obscure his own failings. People talk about Confederate flag sightings in the protest when there's video of other protesters being like, bro, what the fuck are you doing here, and making them leave, as if half of them aren't false flags planted there to look deplorable for conveniently placed journalists who just happen to find them in a massive crowd. Conspiracies aside, this is about as honest of a working class protest as you can get, and for some reason the left side of the political spectrum that exists almost purely to stand up for rights of the working class can't get behind it. It's too iffy for them. Like, yeah, we like the working class, but we love mandates more. These protesters are anti-vax, right? No, they're anti-mandate. Many of them probably are vaccinated. Anything framing this protest as anti-vax is dishonesty. There probably are anti-vax people among them who hate vaccines for some of their rare negative effects, mandate or not, but the protest is about the mandate. I am also double vaccinated, and I think vaccine mandates are heavy-handed security going too far in an unsuccessful, by the way, effort to keep people safe that comes with an unjustifiable trade-off of freedom that doesn't balance out. The government isn't your mommy and daddy. They shouldn't be imposing strict mandates on behalf of your individual safety. If there's a contagion out there killing people that aren't even in your age range, it should be up to you to weigh the risks on your own terms and roll whatever dice need rolling. Or should we give the government the keys to our birdcage and only let us out when they see fit? Call me an alt-right fascist, but I'm pretty sure by process of elimination, the only reason left why progressives wouldn't support the trucker movement is because it would loosen their ideological grip on power. Justin Trudeau is as progressive as it gets over there. The protest is a direct call-out to one of his horrible directives, so to support the protest would be to fight against their own ideals. Not that mandates are even progressive in nature, but they are authoritarian, and that's the other half of the coin. The progressive doctrine is basically a coin flip between heads, 
which are true progressive ideals meant to better society with pure motives, whether you approve of them or not, and tales, which are authoritarian power gambits meant to destroy dissent and consolidate the one true way of thinking. If you'd like a coin analogy for the right, in the interest of fairness, you can have that shit too. The conservative doctrine is a coin flip between heads, which are true conservative ideals meant to preserve that which is already functional and not fuck up what we already have by making big improperly calculated moves, whether you approve of them or not, and tales, which would be attempts to create a racial slash religious ethno state where either one race or one religion would reign supreme and exact righteous judgment on all heretics. I don't like the tail side of either coin, to be honest. If I have the option, I want head every time. But part of the issue is that the people who are on the head side of the coin on the progressive side are very often held hostage by the people on the tail side of the coin pretending to be on the head side of the coin. So you've got these authoritarian power seekers masquerading as progressives issuing authoritarian directives masquerading as progressive directives to the actual progressives who then believe that by carrying out authoritarian directives they are achieving progressive goals. What a lovely system. How can you tell an authoritarian from a true progressive then, you may ask? And there's some ways. The first way is that the authoritarian believes they are the final authority on everything. They are the ones blocking people who disagree with them, not to be confused with people who block trolls that are either clearly trolling or just reply guys to everything they say and never shut up. They're the ones who demand compliance from their friend groups. They're the ones who are like, if you still follow this person on Twitter, we have nothing to talk about. They are the ones who claim to speak for their respective groups, like if they're black and something offends them, they'll be like, you don't understand black people, how this hurts us. You need to educate yourself. Like, bitch, speak for yourself. If it was a joke about black people, there are black people laughing at it as we speak. But I suspect those aren't the black people you'd want this person to learn from, am I right? Just you and people who agree with you. Yep, thought so, fake cunts. Same with any other group. Asians, Hispanics, gays, transes. If they talk like they got elected, you don't want to listen to them. Even if they did get elected to something, it probably wasn't the supreme king of queers, so their word isn't law. Authoritarians will utilize all the same personality traits of your average bitch, but they'll put BLM in their Tinder profile, so you're the bitch if you question them. Well, that was way more than I thought I had to say about all of that, so let's move on to Joe Rogan. The world's largest podcaster, both in viewership and muscle definition, is under targeted censorship attack from the motherfucking White House. The White House wants to tackle COVID misinformation now? Why haven't they censored themselves? Why haven't they censored every mainstream media outlet on TV? Joe Biden and Rachel Maddow and Bill Gates and everyone else were all on tape back in the day like, if you get this vaccine, you will not get COVID. You will not transmit COVID. It didn't even become kosher to say vaccinated people can still spread the disease until like a month ago, despite us having access to the data for almost years now. Like Joe Rogan said in a video addressing some of this, stuff that was considered misinformation a year ago is now widespread fact today. Like that vaccines didn't stop the spread or prevent you from getting COVID or that it came from a lab or that the death rate was largely correlated to having multiple comorbidities, aka you have to have a bunch of things wrong with you, etc, etc. You can count on one hand the number of things the media has gotten right about this virus, but Joe Rogan is the beast that needs to be slain when he's out here talking to doctors who have more credentials than most. This dude doesn't just come out on the podcast like Alex Jones, the vaccines are turning the frogs gay. He is literally talking to people educated on the subject, which is more than most of us are doing. And that's part of why he has the number one podcast in the world. It's actually crazy how flippantly you can write off someone who has the number one podcast in the world. Like, how do you think he got there? By being dishonest? By lying and cheating and being racist? By doing things the general population would disapprove of? If the general population disapproved of him, guess who wouldn't be the number one podcast in the world? That's kind of how that shit works. But this is how this story played out. People targeted him for COVID misinformation, so they tried to get Spotify to deplatform him despite them having a $100 million contract with him. Spotify didn't do that. Instead, they deleted the two episodes with the two doctors, McCullough and Malone. Joe Rogan released a statement and did not get deplatformed at that time. This infuriated the would-be cancelers, so since they couldn't get him on COVID, they proved that it was never about COVID in the first place by trying to smear him as a racist because of him quoting other people saying the N-word in previous episodes, and an implied racial joke about the Planet of the Apes in reference to a black neighborhood, which he immediately called himself out for at the time right after having said it in the same conversation. The funny part is that this was already a story three years ago. In February 2019, some jealous radio host called Joe Rogan out for the same thing, and it became a media blurb for 
for a day before it died immediately, so we've already been through this shit. To his credit, or not, Joe Rogan recently apologized for all of that, which is, in my view, bad. This is Kevin Hart shit. Why would you apologize the third time it makes the news cycle like it's gonna help anything? All that does is retroactively justify the tactics employed in making that apology come to the surface. It's like rewarding a torturer with information. You give them the information and they're like, oh, I guess torturing works. I'll remember that. Now all the accountability addicts get to declare themselves victorious while the apology makes no difference to their end goal of canceling him. We'll see how this plays out, but it's far from over. It's so unbelievable that this all started because a bunch of geriatric has-beens wanted their name back in dim lights for two seconds, so they told Spotify to take their music off the platform, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry with 20 clicks on their album joined the boycott to get their band in the background of a news article about it. I've never seen a faker display of solipsistic self-satire in my life. These fucking dolts walked out of Spotify's doors and were immediately like, listen to us on Amazon music instead. Like Amazon is some goody two-shoes company with no glaring issues, I can tell your brain turned off on your 75th birthday, Neil. Time for your body to catch up. Enjoy shilling for Amazon with a clean conscience, you walking cobweb. But that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to flag it for COVID misinformation. Maybe the White House will notice me. Watch all my videos in alphabetical order while skipping the letter L, and I'll see you guys next time.